okay, we've been told that we don't really have the right to protest in groups of more than six people because of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. However, this doesn't seem to be equally applied to all groups, as over the weekend in London, thousands of protesters descended upon central London in the name of Black Trans Lives Matter. The protest was organised by London Trans Pride, and it took place at the same general timing that normal pride would take place in London. The protesters who had signs like fight police brutality, fight racism and fight imperialism descended upon Parliament Square and actually graffitied a Parliament sign replacing Parliament with racists. So who is this group? Uh, There isn't really so much a lot of information on Black Trans Lives Matter as a solid group. However, they do have a co-founder. Her name is Cherno Biko, and she wrote for the Huffington Post in 2016 that Black trans women are systematically being lynched which of course brings up very provocative imagery in one's head. You're going to have ideas of the Ku Klux Klan and issues of police brutality. And with all of this in mind, I thought it might be quite interesting to actually take a look into some of the murders which have been happening, in particular in the UK and the United States. I have talked about this topic a number of times, but I thought it needs to have another dive in considering the current political climate that we find ourselves in. So what is it that Black Trans Lives Matter is really pushing? Well, as I mentioned earlier, there have been signs including fight imperialism, fight racism, fight police brutality. And it seems like this, these uh, phrases are being parroted by many of the supporters. So what I'm expecting to see is something which kind of backs up these arguments. Now, I've had a look over the deaths of trans women in the UK over the last 10 years, of which eight trans women have been murdered. Probably the most well-known at this point will be Naomi Hersey, a black trans woman who was murdered by a white man in a hotel room near Heathrow back in 2018. Because of the small number of deaths in the UK over this time, it's very hard to build a narrative that we are dealing with a pandemic of trans violence in this country. However, I should quickly note that of the eight murders I've mentioned, only one of them was of a black trans woman. However, it's fair to say that like Black Lives Matter UK, Black Trans Lives Matter are going to be comparing this a lot more with America. And so I thought it would be good to have a look over the last 18 months and kind of see what the narrative is actually telling us. So starting with 2019, there is definitely a trend of black trans women in particular being a higher risk of murder than any other trans group. In fact, out of 27 deaths recorded by the Human Rights Council, 24 of them, in fact, were actually black trans people. Of those 24, however, two of them shouldn't really be in this list. One of them wasn't a trans woman at all, and another one died of natural causes whilst in solitary confinement. So just to clarify, one of these is not a murder of a trans woman. Another one is a, simply a death in police custody. I should note that the that there is being disciplinary action taken against the officers in that case. However, it doesn't appear to be a malicious death. I'm not counting that as a murder. So what we have are 22 murders of black trans women taking place in 2019. In 2020, there is a bigger mix of victims when it comes down to race. Of the 16 recorded so far, five of which are black trans people, there are four white people, and there are six Latino people. Now, on top of that, there is one person whose race is unknown. I should also mention that the majority of the Latino deaths took place in Puerto Rico, but I want to see what the what we actually know from the deaths of these people. And I want to make it very clear that I am taking the subject very seriously. I want to note that Of a lot of these deaths over 2019 and 2020, we don't actually know any details of the assailants or the cause of the death. However, of the deaths in 2019, we do know that 15 of them actually have a description of the killer. So on top of this, when we're looking at black trans women in particular, because they were the group that was most at risk last year, all but one were killed by 
black men. The one, the one outlier of this is China Lindsay, and it appears that her assailant, a teenage Latino boy, found out about her trans status. So it does seem very likely that she was actually killed for being trans. Now in 2020, we do have a better understanding of the murderers and their races, or especially with their likely races. Now of these Every, trans per every black trans person was murdered by a black man with one solid exception. This was Tony McDale, a black trans man who was shot by a white police officer. The police said that Tony was a murder suspect and had pulled out a weapon at an officer who fired back in self-defense. However, I should also note that there has been eyewitness reports which conflict this message, some saying that the police officer was actually racist towards Tony. But otherwise, the only deaths that we really have involving law enforcement are mostly involving white trans women. The only other one that I can find was someone who was killed by security officers, however, we do not know the race of those officers at all. So the stats are really telling us that there is indeed a, especially for 2019 at least, there was a higher risk of black trans women to be the victims of murder. However, the narrative that this was done due to racism is lax at best. There was very little reported about police brutality aimed at these groups. And what's more, it's not even clear whether most of these were related to transphobia. But why is it important to highlight any of this? Well, it's, it is important because we're seeing a narrative being pushed, effectively using the deaths of these people as a way of scoring political points. And it seems very easy that you can say black trans lives matter, hold up pictures of dead people and say, don't ask questions. But really questions should be asked. And some people are indeed asking questions, including people who might be connected to the movement. In Teen Vogue, which is certainly turned more Marxist for a teenage fashion magazine, there is, one of their writers, Devin Norell, did note that it seems to be the majority of trans, black trans women are being killed by black men. Now, she does say that this is actually related to white supremacy, but I would generally disagree. I do think that that's quite a tangible link at best and you need to be more solid if you're going to make that definition, especially when so little is known about the murders themselves. However, if you're going to simply use these people's deaths as a weapon in a political battle, which seems to be what's happening, I can't help but not respect that. I can't help but feel like people are using these figures simply as a way of claiming, claiming and scoring points here. If these lies really matter, and they should matter, you should be looking at why they are in these positions in the first place. You should be looking at who it is who is doing the killing and why. Absolutely, I agree with the group when they say that justice needs to be demanded, as it does for everyone who has been murdered. However, I'm not seeing that here. Instead, I'm seeing other messages being used. Messages of fight white supremacy by black trans women who were killed by black men. Fight police brutality using black trans women who were not killed by police officers. And it just seems to be that you're using them just because you're more bothered about the message that you are pushing than the lives of these women. It's simply not on. And I think that this needs to be called out more, especially as this is a, a very common trait within the trans community. When you look at things like Trans Day of Remembrance, where deaths are often talked about as though this is a universal problem, when really the vast majority are happening in areas of the world with incredibly high murder rates. So you simply, for example, cannot compare the death of a Brazilian sex worker in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro to someone who might have died in London because they're in very, very different circumstances. It's such a common tactic that we are using deaths of innocent people as a way to score political points. And yes, this is not just unique to the Black Trans Lives Matter movement or Trans Day of Remembrance. Lots of people do it, but there is a real person behind every one of these figures. These movements really need to be aware that the deaths simply do not line up with their narratives. And I think that it is doing much more harm and it's far more dehumanizing 
to use them as a political football rather than remember them and actually look into why they were murdered and demand change, even if such an answer is uncomfortable to these people, even if it is completely inconvenient to their narrative, it should still be done. I understand that this is quite a controversial topic. It's one which I am not meaning to be controversial about. However, I do have to ask questions whenever the deaths of trans people are paraded as examples of systematic violence against us. The figures simply don't back it up. And a special thank you to Alex Meadows, Alyssa Morris, Aurora T. Silva, Katie Adolson, Dan Norman, Ada Meadows, Finella Cooney, James C. George, James UK, Janine Karen, Jess, Joe, Kim Bandry, Latin Creature, Moif Bellasita, Nova B, Rezzy, Ricardo Jose, Steve Hendricks, Tennessee Barfly, The Poor of Rizzo, Zoe, Stefan Hansen, Leisha, and all of my supporters on Patreon and Subscribestar. 